going to learn how websites work and how web languages are related to each other. Previously, we said we shall learn the following languages. We said we shall learn HTML5, Bootstrap, jQuery, PHP, and MySQL. But the question is, how are these languages related to each other? How do they work? And what are these languages? In this lecture, we are going to cover all these answers. So, let's get started. To understand how these languages are related to each other, and what are these languages, we must first understand how websites work. For example, as you can see here, we are having our client side as well as the server side. The client means us or the users who are using internet or who are accessing the websites and the server is where the websites are saved. So the mobile phone or the computer that you're using to access the internet is what we call the client. And those files that you're looking at in your mobile phone on the computer that are on in a website are saved on the server. So this is how we call these two different entities in websites. To access a website, we must be having a web browser. A web browser is a software that we use to access web pages. So in this computer that we have, we are going to first install the web browsers. If it's the mobile phone, then still you have to install their web have to install their web browsers. So let us install web browsers. I'll install the first one, Opera Mini. Another one, Google Chrome. I'll install uh, Microsoft Edge. I'll install uh, Firefox. I'll install Safari. I'll install this web browser. You can install one of these and still use it. But we have installed all of them in the computer that we have. Now, I'll open my favorite browser to access the web page located on the server. I'll open one of them. So this is a web browser which is open. You're going I'm going to put here my URL or website that I want to access. So I'll come and type here www.example.com. Then I'll click on enter. When I click on enter, it will create connection between this website, I mean between my computer and the server. Then it will request the server to send for me a website, I mean a web page that I want to see. And the server will connect with my computer. After connecting, then the server will send me a web page that I want to see. It will come and load in my web browser. As you can see, the web page has been loaded in my web browser and my web browser will interpret whatever code is written in that web page and display for me what is that web page. Before we proceed, we saw a file coming to our computer. Let us first discuss about that file. After understanding what is meant by that file, then we shall proceed. I'll bring that file here. And that file is the one that we call a web page. This file it normally have many extensions. It may be written, I mean it may be having an extension of .html or .htf or .asp or .php or .etc and many others. And many others. Even though our web page may be having as many different types of extensions as possible. They will always have three common things. These web pages will always be written in three languages that a web uh, that a web browser can understand. And these languages are HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Those are the three languages that we use to design a web page. So, whatever extension this web page may be having, it will always be, all those web pages will always be written in these three languages, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Those are the only three languages that the web browser uses to interpret a web page. 
So to approach the meaning of these languages, we shall begin by discussing the languages that we use to develop the client side or the web page. As you have seen, the web page will always be developed in three languages, HTML, CSS and JavaScript. Let us remove CSS and see how things look like. Can you see? Okay, I'll go back again. Look clearly when this web page is having the HTML and CSS. Look clearly. Then we are going to see the difference by removing CSS and JavaScript. Let us cancel them and see. You see, only the content is remaining. The color has gone, the shapes have gone, and uh, the orientation has gone. Only the structure has remained, the content. And that brings us to the definition of HTML. HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language. It is a standard language for creating web pages and web applications. Web browsers receive the HTML documents from a web server or the local storage and render the document into a multimedia web page, as how we saw in the previous page. HTML describes the structure of a web page, semantically and originally included the cues for the appearance of the document. So in other words, the use of HTML is just to tell the structure of the web page, not the color, not the fonts or the layout. It's just the structure and the content. So, I tried to collect some logos of famous websites and remove the CSS and let us see how they could look like without CSS. That's how Facebook could look like without CSS. That's how Google logo could look like without CSS. That's how YouTube logo could look like if you remove the CSS. And that's how Yahoo logo could look like without CSS. Imagine how could things be without CSS. Now, we come back to our web page that we have without CSS. Everything is just in black and white. Let us put CSS. Then things are colored, things are shaped, things are organized things are in the right layout. I remove again CSS, see clearly, I implement CSS. So now you can guess the meaning of CSS. CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheets. It's a style sheet language used for describing the presentation of a document written in a markup language such as HTML. So we use CSS to describe the HTML, how it should look like. CSS is designed to enable separation of representation and the content, including the layouts, colors, and, con and fonts. As how we've seen, we could separate the design and the content. So CSS has that power. We can separate it aside and uh, we put the content aside. When we want, we implement CSS. When we don't want, we remove the CSS. In addition to HTML, other markup language that supports the use of CSS include XHTML, plain XML, SVG, and XUL. Also, these languages, we can use CSS to format them. Now, let us look at these logos for the famous websites how they are looking with CSS. Let us look at Facebook, how it looks today with CSS. We can see, that's a Facebook with CSS. We look at Google, how it looks today with CSS. Let us look at YouTube, how it looks like today with CSS. You can see, that's YouTube with CSS. So CSS is the one that says this one should be red, this one should be black, this text should be this shape. Let us look at Yahoo, with CSS. So this is how things could be with just HTML without CSS. And this is, this is how things are with HTML and CSS. So CSS is that colorful and useful in web technologies. Just imagine if we do not have CSS in web technologies, how things could look like. How, could we, or how could Facebook look like? 
and how could Google look like? How could YouTube YouTube page look like without CSS? And how could Yahoo look like without CSS? I believe you now know the meaning of CSS and why we need CSS in our pages. Again, we come back to our page. Now, it means that today we have understood what is meant by the HTML and what is meant by CSS. HTML is just the content without colors, layout, and font text, I mean, and font styles. And CSS is the color, the layouts, and how, and how the page should be organized. Then, what is Bootstrap? We said Bootstrap is the framework of CSS, then what is it? Bootstrap is a free front-end framework for faster and easier web development. Bootstrap includes HTML, CSS, base design template for typography, forms, buttons, tables, navigation, models, image, carousel, and many other components. I mean, Bootstrap also uses optional JavaScript plugin. Bootstrap also gives us ability to easily create responsive designs. Now, we have CSS and Bootstrap. These two, we are going to see which one does things easier, and at the end of the day, you will judge which one is better for you. The task is to write this button with the word sent and shaped in that way. We're going to see what CSS will cost us and what Bootstrap will cost us to come up with this button. So, we shall set the grounds of CSS and set the grounds of Bootstrap. Let's begin with CSS. CSS, you will need to specify the following when you're creating this button. You must specify the height of this button. You must specify the width of this button. You must specify the color of this button. You must specify the alignment of this button. You must specify the alignment of the text in this button. You must specify the left border top of this button. In other, in other words, this side. You must specify how this side should look like. You must specify the left bottom radius of this button. You must specify how this should look like. You must specify the right border of the radius, this side, how it should look like on the top. You must specify how this also should look like the bottom. You must specify the margin, how this button should be far from the other component next to it. You must specify the margin right on this side also, how should it be far from the component next to it on this side. You must specify the margin top. How should it be far from the top? You must specify the margin bottom. You must specify the padding. How did these words should be far from the edge of this button? You must specify the padding right, the padding left, the padding top, and the padding bottom. So to come up with this button, with with oh, I mean, with to come up with this button using CSS. We shall need to specify all these attributes. Isn't it tiresome? I don't know. We, so we shall judge at the end of the competition. Let us come to the side of Bootstrap. Bootstrap will just specify the button type. Then you specify the radius of the borders. Then you specify the padding of the text inside. And you specify the margin of the button. And you specify the alignment then you'll come up with this button. So, it means that CSS is having a lot of attributes to come up with something small. And this stuff is just uh, some simple attributes to come up with this. So you can judge for a beginner which side will be better for them to simply grasp for the technologies. I think both stuff. But if you show someone that to come up with this, you need all these lines, and he's a beginner, he run away, they become demoralized. And that's why we are going to begin with Bootstrap. But CSS, even though we are going to begin with Bootstrap, CSS 
will give you full control to control a certain item or a certain element but bootstrap will have will come up with a beautiful element within just using a few lines but you don't have full control so you, shall, you can judge the two which one to learn or which one to go deeper in with but that's the difference between bootstrap and CSS so why should we use bootstrap at first bootstrap is easy to use bootstrap is responsive bootstrap has large, has large number of templates available today in the world and bootstrap grid system helps us to simply separate uh, divs in the web pages that we are going to make these are among the reasons why we should begin with bootstrap so instead of CSS we shall begin with bootstrap to come up to make our web pages or to continue with this course however I recommend you also to continue studying CSS or to learn CSS let's proceed you now know what is meant by HTML and you now know what is meant by CSS and what is meant by bootstrap no one can confuse you now if you still have confusion please put the problem in the comment section and we shall discuss about it let's proceed we shall come back again to our web page with our server the task that I'm going to do at this time I'm going just to like this post maybe it's like a certain post or to like something on the page I'll click on like the process is this page will have to say that I have liked on the server so the server should save that I have liked something on the page then the server again will process and send me the results and it will send me the page showing that I have liked a certain item and you have seen only the dislike done that has changed but the page is still the same wait do you think this is tiresome see what has happened it has loaded the whole page just for a mere like and that is each single action that we shall do on this page it will have to load the whole page even if I want just to maybe send a friend request on Facebook then it will have to load the whole page just a mere friend request and it will bring back the same thing but only with one small thing that has changed that is tiresome it wastes time and data it will waste our internet just to make a simple action then it loads the whole page again bring the same page just only with one simple action changed that wastes too much data and time in fact that is a bad design here are our problems we need someone or another language that will perform for us these things listen to the page all the time listen to the server all the time and should have full control to both the page and the server in other words if a certain action is made here that language should listen and be able to make some action or if a certain action is made on the server that language should listen and made and update us here that a certain action has been made here not to refresh the whole page or not to load the whole page when you want to make a simple action those are the problems that we have at this point how can we solve this problem we shall need someone here who is installed on our computer or the mobile phones or whatever platform that we are using to access the internet or the web pages and he will solve for us these problems he will always listen to both the web page and the client in case of any certain change he can be able to solve it for example if I'm going to perform a very simple task that will not need to load the whole page for example liking a post on Facebook or liking a video on YouTube I'll click on like it will send that information to the server that I have liked something then the server will process and 
confirm that you have liked something and record it and the server will send us the feedback that we have liked something and it has been recorded again this language or this item here okay it's a language it should evaluate and process if this feedback that has been sent from the server was successful and after successful should be able to control this web page and tell us that it has been successful and the like is no longer like now you can dislike it you have seen the you have seen the problem solution and that is what we need not to load the whole page just for a simple task that we can do the second task we say that we need a language that will always listen to what is happening on the server for example in case our friend has joined us on online or someone has offline has come online this language should be able to know that someone has come online then it will evaluate which person is and then it should be able to control again this web page and notify us as you can see it will bring and tell us someone has come online and do not fire us here xyz is now online again should have the control on this page to hide the notification that's what we need not to refresh the whole page just to know someone who has come online lastly we should be able again to communicate with this server without loading the whole page for example I'm going to send a message to my friend. I'll come and click on the message box and type good night. Then I click on send. This message should come on the server. The server should process that message and send it. Then after sending it, again should give me feedback that this message was sent successful. Then again that language should be able to process if this feedback is successful one or failed. Then not fires that the message was successful by giving us a notification and after notification should do what should hide the notification that the message was successful so for simple tasks that we can do this language should be able to manipulate the server and the web page without loading the whole page in other words it should be the brain of this web page now the question is, do you think HTML can do that? I don't know, because HTML is said is just for content. So HTML cannot do that, cannot, does not have that ability. Okay. Do you think CSS can do that? Of course no. CSS is just for design, shape and colors. Now which other language do you need to, man, to do these tasks? That language is called JavaScript. JavaScript is the one that can perform all these tasks. That takes us to the meaning and the definition of JavaScript. JavaScript alongside HTML and CSS are three core technologies of the world wide web. JavaScript enables interactive web pages and thus is essential part of web applications. JavaScript supports much of the structured programming syntax from C. For example, the statements of JavaScript if statements are like those of C. The while loops of JavaScript are like those of C. Switch statements and do while loops and many other related things that are in JavaScript which are like C. Today, JavaScript has become one of the most, most popular programming languages on the web. And that brings back to our client side. We now know what is meant by HTML, what is meant by Bootstrap, and what is meant by JavaScript. If you still have problem with the meaning of HTML, Bootstrap, and JavaScript, please put your problem in the comment section and we shall discuss about it. Now we come to jQuery. We have covered CSS, Bootstrap, HTML, and JavaScript. 
then why do we need jQuery? jQuery is a JavaScript library designed to simplify the client-side scripting of HTML. In other words, we use jQuery to write JavaScript in a simple way. jQuery syntax is designed to make it easier to navigate a document, select elements, create animations, and handle events like Ajax on application. What you are performing, communicating to the server without loading the whole page is what we call the Ajax. jQuery also provides capabilities for the developers to create plugins and top up the JavaScript library. Web analysis indicates that jQuery is the most widely deployed JavaScript library by a large margin. So jQuery is that powerful and that's why we shall include it in this web course. So instead of using JavaScript or instead of going deeper in JavaScript, we shall first learn the jQuery. And you now know what is meant by HTML what is meant by bootstrap and what is meant by jQuery. If you've not understood what is meant by these language and libraries, please put your problem in the comment section and we shall discuss about it. And that makes the end of our today's lecture. But before we go, let us first summarize of what we have discussed in this lecture. We have looked at the meaning of HTML. HTML describes the structure of a web page. I've looked at the meaning of CSS. CSS stands for cascading style sheets and is used to style the HTML. We have looked at the meaning of bootstrap. In simple terms, bootstrap is a simpler way to write CSS. We have looked at the meaning of JavaScript. JavaScript enables the interactive web pages. Please don't miss in the next lecture we are going to learn how web languages are related to each other on the server side. If this video was helpful to you, please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and like the video and share. Let us meet in the next lecture. Thank you for watching.